So why is this topic of counterintuitive is so important? Well, because wisdom itself is counterintuitive. And one of the things that I love most of all is wisdom. And people who love wisdom are, by definition, philosophers. And that's really what actualize.org is. It's, it's a modern version of philosophy. And philosophy is not just abstract ideas about stuff. Philosophy is about how to live the good life. It's also the pursuit of truth. How do you structure your life such that you live the best kind of life? That is philosophy, and that requires wisdom. And that is counterintuitive stuff. And so, since most people, what they're looking for life in life is they're looking for a good life, but then they don't take into account the wisdom and the counterintuitive nature of wisdom, then they end up getting the wrong kind of life, and then they suffer, and then they're depressed, and then they, uh, they get all the wrong kind of results, and they can't get success where they want it. What I want to teach you is how to get good at spotting wisdom. And another sort of corollary principle uh, that I want to share with you is that the more wise a teaching is, the more counterintuitive it is. The more a fool will look at it and say, oh, that's not wisdom, that's idiocy. And that's precisely how you know that it's wise. Because to a fool, it looks like foolishness. But to a wise person, it looks like deep wisdom. Psychology, I want you to notice, is especially counterintuitive. If you studied various research that has been done in, in psychology, and various psychological studies that have been done over the last hundred years, let's say, um, within universities and academia, you know, they, they keep coming up with all sorts of psychological studies that produce counterintuitive results, where people behave in ways that you would think that they wouldn't behave, but they behave that way. And it's because psychology runs your whole life, it's so important to understand psychology, but then psychology is so counterintuitive. And then that's what gets you into trouble, is the psychology that you bring into every situation in life. The psychology of money, the psychology of relationships, the psychology of business, the psychology of marketing, the psychology of your career, the psychology of uh, all of your emotions. That's what we're really interested in when we're talking about creating the good life. And also, think about how reverse psychology works. You know, on a child, you use reverse psychology to get them to do something that they didn't want to do. And that's very counterintuitive, isn't it? Like, when you tell a child to brush his teeth, he doesn't want to do it. And sometimes he doesn't do it just to spite you. So you can use reverse psychology of, oh, don't need to brush your teeth. And then maybe he will. Of course, maybe he won't. But uh, that's reverse psychology. So that gets a little idea of what we're talking about. And also, think about being a great strategist. The greatest strategists, what were they? They were highly counterintuitive thinkers. And I, of course, encourage you to do a lot of strategic thinking. I have a whole episode, one of my most popular ones, called How to Be a Strategic Motherfucker, where I talk about how to do just, just that. But think of, for example, Sun Tzu's The Art of War. What does he talk about there? He talks about military strategy. And all of it is about being tricky and being counterintuitive and outthinking your opponent not just using brute force.